If you've been following events in Ukraine lately, you're probably familiar with this letter. The symbol used by people across Russia to show support for their military's recent actions. For the people of Ukraine, however, this letter very understandably represents aggression, horrific war crimes, and occupation. As of just a few weeks ago, though, there is a new letter in town, the Yi. For the people of Mariupol in particular, a city which has been suffering unspeakable war crimes since February, the Yi is a symbol of pride, of hope, and most of all, of resistance. I'm going to tell you the story of this exciting new form of protest, how it began and how it's being used. And then we're going to speak to Petro Andriyashenko, the advisor to the mayor of Mariupol, who has been documenting and encouraging the use of the Yi by partisans in Mariupol since it first appeared on the 5th of September. Stay tuned. This is a video about two letters. Actually, this letter sucks. Let's get rid of it. This is the letter I want to speak about, the Yi, or as English speakers might describe it, the I with two dots. First, let's talk about why this letter is so special. Russian, Ukrainian, and many other languages in Eastern Europe use the Cyrillic alphabet, but it's not unusual for some languages to use a slightly different version of it with one or two unique letters. For example, the J, which makes a J sound, is used only in Serbo-Croatian, and the li, which makes the l sound, is used only in Macedonian. Ukrainian contains two unusual Cyrillic letters, but this one, the yi, appears in no other major Slavic language. So if you see the letter yi in a word, that's a pretty sure sign that the language that you're looking at is Ukrainian. And there's no better example of this than the Ukrainian word for Ukraine itself. Ukraina. So remember this, for all practical purposes, the Yi is uniquely Ukrainian, and crucially, it does not appear in the Russian alphabet. And for that reason, to remind the Russian soldiers who have been occupying their city since the spring that Ukrainians are not Russians, some very brave people at Mariupol have recently begun placing the letter Yi everywhere they can, sometimes with paint, but often hastily scribbled with chalk. This is an incredibly brave act of defiance, but let's explain exactly why. And to do that, let's review exactly what the people of Mariupol have endured since this invasion began. When Russia invaded Ukraine in 2014, it captured the Crimean Peninsula and portions of the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. During the first few days of its 2020 invasion, Russia hoped to topple the Ukrainian government and gain control of the entire country in a few days. This failed spectacularly, so Russia then began focusing on secondary goals, and the most important of these was to connect Crimea with its territory in Donetsk. Mariupol is the largest city in this strip of land here along the coast, and is the most significant port on the Sea of Azov here. So right from the start, capturing Mariupol became a key Russian objective. The siege of Mariupol started the day after the invasion began, on the 25th of February. During the next few weeks, Two of the most well-publicized and egregious war crimes of the early part of the invasion took place there. On the 9th of March, a Russian airstrike hit Maternity Hospital No. 3, and on the 16th, other Russian forces bombed the Donetsk Academic Regional Drama Theater, which was then serving as a bomb shelter for hundreds of civilians. And this was despite the word children, in Russian, being written in large letters on two sides of the building. Within a month of the siege beginning, Ukrainian authorities had estimated that 90% of Mariupol's buildings had been damaged or destroyed. Despite the devastation to their city, Ukrainian troops in Mariupol managed to hang on for three months, until the 16th of May. During the last few weeks of the siege, Ukrainian forces operated from a bomb shelter in the city's main steelworks plant. They held on for weeks longer than anyone expected, helping to tie up Russian forces during a critical time, but eventually, they were forced to surrender. Under Russian occupation, life for the Ukrainian people of Mariupol has been extremely grim. It's impossible to know the full story, but even if we did, it's not something I could really explain on a YouTube video without falling foul of YouTube's content guidelines. 
Let's just put it this way. What's been happening to the people of Mariupol for the last six months is much worse than almost anything that we could possibly imagine, let alone have endured ourselves. And there is a very real threat that anyone caught engaging in rebellion or sabotage will face arrest, detention, torture, and death. Which is why the decision of some very brave people in Mariupol to start covering their city with the letter Y is so brave. As far as I've been able to tell, and this information has also been confirmed by Mr. Andriyashenko, who we will hear from in a moment, the first use of the letter Y as a protest against occupation in Mariupol took place on the 5th of September, just a few weeks before this video will be published. I'm not 100% sure that the use of the Y like this began in Mariupol. That's something that's very hard to determine, but its use in the city has certainly been prolific. And it has infuriated the Russian occupation authorities. The earliest recorded instance of the Yi I have is this one, where it is written on the cobbles in front of this monument to Taras Shevchenko. Shevchenko was one of the founders of modern Ukrainian culture, a champion of Ukrainian independence, and a fierce critic of Russia. And one of the most famous lines in his most famous poems is Rabiv do Rayu ne Puskayut. Slaves are not allowed into paradise. This line is quoted in a lot of the material from Mariupol I've seen always followed by the line, me ne rabi, we are not slaves. There's one other thing I need to acknowledge which comes up in a lot of the material coming out of Mariupol. Besides representing the uniqueness of the Ukrainian language and culture, the Yi also is the first letter in a very, very rude word in Ukrainian. And it's become quite common since the invasion began all across Ukraine to say, <laughs> the Russians. I'm not going to show or say this word or say much more about it because I don't want to fall foul of YouTube's content guidelines again, but just know that that is a second reason why the Yi has become so popular as a symbol of protest. Since the Yi first appeared in Mariupol on the 5th of September, it has been appearing every day in all sorts of places all over the city ever since. The occupation authorities and those who have been collaborating with them have been outraged. This post from a pro-Russian telegram channel refers to the people who paint Yi's around the city as terrorists. And according to multiple reports, police have stepped up patrols around the city and begun to search bags for chalk and paint because basically, every time a new Yi appears, it makes the occupation forces look impotent and stupid. Now, if we're totally honest, painting Yi's around Mariupol and other occupied parts of the country will not win this war for the people of Ukraine. Ultimately, this will be done by soldiers fighting on the front line. But it is important to remember that psychology can play an extremely important role in warfare. We need to look no farther than the underperforming Russian military, which has reportedly suffered from low morale since the start of the invasion, and the highly motivated Ukrainian forces, who unexpectedly reclaimed thousands of square kilometers of Ukrainian territory in a counteroffensive earlier this month. When the Mariupol resistance, paints the letter Yi around the city, it tells the Russian occupiers that they will not submit, that they will resist, that they are not slaves. And I'm pretty confident that with each new letter Yi that appears around the city, the morale of the Russian occupation forces just gets a little bit worse. And of course, the letter Yi sends a message of hope to the ordinary people of Mariupol who did absolutely nothing to deserve the terrible crimes which they have had to endure for the last six months. The people of Mariupol really need as much help as they can get at the moment, because besides the conflict, the brutal occupation, and the destruction of their city, winter is coming. And not in a good way. Earlier this week, I was lucky enough to be able to chat with Petro Andriyashenko, who is an advisor to the mayor of Mariupol the mayor in the legal Ukrainian government of Mariupol, that is, not the occupation forces. As part of his work supporting the resistance in Mariupol, he runs a very active telegram channel which is called Andriyashenko Time, and that's where a lot of the images which you've seen in this video have come from. So here's my chat with Petro, and just so you don't worry, he's confirmed that he is somewhere safe and that he's not endangering himself in any way by appearing in this video. Okay, so I'm really delighted to have uh, with me here on the video Petro Andriyashenko, who is from the Mariupol uh, city government. Can you tell us what, what is life like for the people of Mariupol? Uh, the city life in Mariupol for our people, it's very hot. A half of uh, 
all people inside the Mariupol without uh, any electricity, without uh, central water. Um, and uh, we are looking forward to winter. And we understand that in Mariupol uh, it's impossible to repair the uh, heating system, central heating system. So it might be the biggest problem for now. We, uh, in Mariupol people <clears throat> haven't enough uh, medicine and haven't enough uh, medical stuff. So the level of uh, deaths are higher and higher day by day. And so life is obviously really grim. How, how is the average person in Mariupol, Mariupol reacting to the occupation? It's a mix, I think. The mix of different feelings and mix of different action. Of course, the most uh, part of people uh, don't think that uh, occupation is good for them. So they try to um, make resistance for, for Russian troops. And it's very hard because, you know, uh, lots of uh, Russian police inside the city and special security. But our people try. And as you know, our resistance that called uh, uh, Ukrainian Yi, it, it's a special symbol, a unique symbol of Ukrainian language. In English, like uh, Russian. It's, it's the same, so near, near the same. <laughs> so the, the Russian authorities, from what I've seen on the Telegram channel you run, which is great when I, I can yeah. translate it, uh, they seem to know what the symbol means, I think. It, what's the reaction amongst the occupiers when they see a, a Yi uh, chalked on the street or painted on a wall? Uh, the first time they uh, didn't understand what it, what it is, but of course... Uh, uh, because our symbol now is very famous, I think, in, in Ukraine and in, in the world. The Russian understands that it's part of resistance and they try to clean and try to find someone who draw it. But uh, it's like a quest for our resistance. Yeah, and I, I see different, I see new versions of it almost every day on either your channel or some of the other channels. So it seems to be constantly new yees around Maria Poles. Yeah, uh, our yeah. resistance every day, I think, uh, try to um, draw in different places. The first symbol, it was near the uh, sculpture of Taras Shevchenko. Our, right. uh, the famous boat, it's, it's our Ukrainian soul, you know. So, but yeah, it, it, it was short for, for occupation troops, but no, uh, it's very creative, I think. Very creative thing for, for resistance, because Ukrainian people understand in Mariupol what it is and why it, uh, why this is this, this symbol we use. I think it's a great symbol, and it's great that you can take a piece of chalk and you know, make a real, you know, instant symbol that e anyone can understand. And uh, that makes it very hard for the Russians to stop it because you can't ban chalk or paint, I guess. What do you expect? What do you think things will be like for the people there, I guess, in coming months? Besides winter, is there any anything, any hope, anything that you're looking for? I don't know. It, it, it's the hardest question. We, we saw that Russian... Uh try to force evacuate lots of people from Mariupol uh, during this May and during this uh, summer. Uh, and we show that we, we will see the same process in the nearest time. And in the spring, I think we see like lots of Russian people uh, come to the Mariupol. Yeah, right. They to change our nation in, in, yeah. in occupation. Which is... Territory. And that's a war crime, isn't it, to forcefully depopulate a population? Uh, of course, but uh, you know, the Mariupol is uh, the synonym uh, word of war, Russian war crime because uh, all our city and all our people is Russian war crimes. Hmm. Wow, okay, so um, I, I really appreciate your time and for you telling us about things in Mariupol and also the, the letter Yi. And um, 
Is there anything that you would ask people to do or watching this who want to help Maria Pole? Is there a, a charity or a, a, an effort that you would suggest that they get behind? Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, we have an own uh, a municipal uh, special fund fund for help for our people for who evacuated and now they stay in Mariupol. Yeah, I'll leave links to the to the funds that you're talking about in the comments in the and in the description of the video. Great, I really really appreciate your time, and uh, thank you so much for for appearing on the video. Thank you. The very best symbols for political change, especially for something as dangerous as resisting a military occupation, are simple, easy to recognize, and easy to reproduce. This is one reason why the letter Yi is such a perfect symbol of resistance. It's unique, but it can be scribbled in a matter of seconds. It effectively weaponizes a piece of chalk. So the next time you see this letter, don't think about the oppression, war crimes, and occupation that it represents. Instead, think of this letter, and remember the brave people of Mariupol and other places in occupied Ukraine who risk their lives to spread it across their cities every day. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the links which Petro Andriyashenko provided, which will be linked in a pinned comment below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.